Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Hello, I'm Monica Weitzel, your host for Community Hotline. It's election season, and that means a lot of talk about our voting rights and freedom of speech. Tonight's show will focus on those issues. We'll start off chatting with the League of Women Voters of Portland. The hard work they do makes your job as a voter so much easier. Then I'll have a conversation with Sue Disciple of the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission about Community Media Day as part of Freedom of Speech Week. You'll get some keen insight in how Metro East and other community media centers help uphold this basic American right. And finally, we'll close out the show with the League of Minority Voters. You'll see how their work as a liaison between communities of color, policy leaders, and institutions is helping change Oregon's voting landscape and why that's important. As you can see, we have lots of great information for you, so don't go away. We'll be right back with Community Hotline. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Glad you joined us tonight. We've got a full show, and it's election year, and so we're going to have a lot of focus on that. We're going to start out talking with the League of Women Voters, uh, an organization I have a lot of respect for and have enjoyed working with. And representing the League, we have Debbie Kay. You're the Vice President of Membership for the League of Women Voters of Portland. Indeed. Nice to have you here, Debbie. Thank you, Monica. And Barbara Ross, you are a longtime member of the League of Women Voters, so thank yes. you for being here. Well, thank you for having us. Yes, we you appreciate bet. it. No problem. So this has been a very busy year for you. Yes. Extremely busy, I'm sure. I mean, it always is, but the League has uh, its... Um, it's fingers in a lot of different pots, I know. One of the main things I know you've been working on is encouraging people to register to vote. Tell me a little bit, uh, well, give me a little bit of history, just a really brief history on the League, and then the, about this focus on registering to vote. Well, the League is almost 100 years old. It wow. came out of the suffrage movement in 1920 to teach women of it originally, and then all citizens eventually, how to participate in civic life, how to get the information, how to be an informed and active voter. Which is a wonderful thing, but way back then, women didn't do that. They no, weren't in Christian, they were not allowed to for a, that is a long true. time. So, so that was yeah. one of the main purposes originally, and right. now we offer education to, to all voters. So uh, the last day to register is October 18th by midnight, and you can register online, you can register with a registration form, you can call up your county elections office and find out how. The uh, webs, you can go through the, excuse me, the Secretary of State's office mm -hmm. at secure.sos.state dot or dot us slash oh <laughs> yeah remember long. that no. yeah <laughs> well, anyway look, look up secretary of state how to register to vote and please register by the 18th right. if you only need to change your registration you may do that um, almost up until election day but it might delay receiving your ballot and ballots will be mailed uh, beginning about the 20th okay okay and so if you moved or your name has changed that kind of thing that's how you exactly. want to update it okay and it really they make it very easy to register to vote I mean it's it's very simple it and really voting easy. itself is it's gotten a lot easier I think with the mail-in ballots and with the help of the league with your wonderful you know um, voters the motor voter the motor <laughs> the motor voter yes yes nice. so tell me um, the your mission is is informed participation, right? You're, you're, you encourage people to to vote and to become uh, actively engaged in, in in civics, and there uh, you have a lot of resources. We that do you have provide. a lot of resources. So what are so some of those things that you provide to make things clear and easier? Um, all, um, all voters receive the state voters pamphlet, but mm -hmm. our voters guide is different, and we have it in English and we have it in. Spanish. 
Spanish, bienvenidos. And our voter's guide is independently researched. We get in, we do the own, our own research on ballot measures and publish that. I like this. You notice the Metro East logo is right here. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll get to our connection with yeah. Metro East in a moment. And we get information from the candidates, their basic biographical information, but we also then ask every candidate running for the same office the same three questions so that voters can learn a little bit about what they would do if elected. In addition to that, we have our video voters guide, and this right. is where our partnership with Metro East is so wonderful. Last week, we taped about 50 eight-minute interviews with candidates running for every office in the Multnomah County general area. That was a busy it's, week for it you, wasn't it? It was a very <laughs> busy week. It's a lot of fun to, good, good. to hear from candidates, again, about what they would do if elected. We also have um, a wonderful website called vote411.org. If you go to this website, it will prompt you to put in your street address and you will see a facsimile of your ballot with links to information about every race on your ballot. Which makes it so easy because you don't have to muddle through and try to figure out, oh no, that's not my district. This is not, you know, somebody exactly. I'll be voting for. It really does make it, it easier. It takes away that yeah. confusion and, yeah. that, and that concern. Right. So those are some of our resources. You can look on our website, lwvpdx.org, and all of those voter resources will be listed. We also have done uh, ballot measure forums. We did one earlier this mm -hmm. week with Metro East, and we did one in September. And those, um, the one in September, which was about ballot measure 97, as well as explanations of three other statewide measures, are up on um, the YouTube button on our uh, league website, lwvpdx.org, and the one from this past uh, Monday, which was on three local ballot measures, it will be up shortly. So you do a lot of research on those we do. on those ballot measures. I know that, <clears throat> and then but you're bipart you know, you're bipartisan. You're um, we're actually non. I mean, non you're nonpartisan. Non sorry, and you're um, and you're very unbiased in your in your um, findings. That so, is that is our goal to yeah. be balanced and yeah. neutral. And we do want to do a lot of research on the on the issues that are important, and uh, we don't take positions on candidates, although we interview candidates and we, we publicize information from candidates, we don't take a position on candidates. Right, right. But we do have advocacy and action. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are important to us. And so uh, uh, when we have issues that we think are really important to the public and fit with our positions that we've taken previously, mm -hmm. then we do take uh, positions on measures. And for example, we have two measures that we've taken positions on this year, 97, mm -hmm. which is the measure that, that does uh, provide taxes for corporations that make over 25 million in Oregon. Right, and which has been fairly controversial uh, this year. It, there, and there are lots of sides to mm -hmm. that, yeah. uh, but uh, the league did study it and we decided that we thought that we should be supporting that because it provides funds for health care, for education, and for senior citizen services. Okay. And then the other issue that we are, in fact, taking a position on is the housing, the affordable housing measure. And again, this is controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, some people think it's important. Some people think it's a really effective way to provide more housing. Right. But housing is a big issue in yes. uh, Portland. And this is. measure would be a, a bond measure that would provide funding for about 3,000 units. And so the league is supporting both of those measures. There are other measures that we have not taken a position on. Uh, and that the voters will have to look at our uh, information, the voters guide and make up their make own minds. Make up their own minds. <laughs> so besides the uh, action and advocacy um, and the voter services, you're also involved in civic education in other ways? We so are. We have a monthly civic education meeting that is free and open to the public and we generally present a panel representing as many sides of an issue as we can find people to describe on contemporary issues. So the first two for this year have both been on ballot measures. But the next one coming up in November on the 14th will be on election methods. The statewide League of Women Voters is conducting a study. How else might we vote besides really? the way we vote right now? Hmm. So that, um, that report will be out soon and leagues all over the state of Oregon will read it and we will talk among ourselves and through a consensus process derive a position with which we will then advocate. Interesting. How does how does that fit into the overall League of Women Voters nationally? You see, you're doing that in Oregon, but 
The National League also does studies. They did a major immigration study many years ago. Um, they, more recently, they did a study on uh, agriculture, which was fascinating because it's so multifaceted. It was a huge study. So when the National League does a study, local leagues, which is you know Portland, mm -hmm. Umatilla, Klamath Falls, uh, Lane County, all read it and discuss it in small group settings and come to a consensus conclusion. Those results are sent in through the state league to the national league, compiled, and a position is derived with which really? they um, will advocate uh, and, and lobby uh, Congress. And uh, we don't take action unless we've studied something. That right, we, we right. Are, we are very uh, pretty thorough. focused on saying <laughs> we want research, we want sound information, we want to develop positions, and then we can take action based on those positions. And one of the most interesting studies that we did, and I think Debbie has a copy of it, it was our, our economic development study that we did mm -hmm. of all the, uh, through the years, through the last 30 years, the economic development efforts that have been here in Portland, mm -hmm. and not just the fashion of the moment, but uh, not just the, the flavor of the moment, but the efforts that people have made in economic development, who has done it, how it was worked, what the results were. And I think this is a really good basis uh, for people to understand when people are saying, okay, this is good for economic development. Okay, let's do a little more. We'll, we'll dig a little deeper. Let's, let's have yeah. a little more information yeah. instead of yeah. this candidate says, uh, I'm going to get jobs for everybody. Right. We, we have um, some footage, I believe, of some of the, uh, of the work that you did here. Some Metro of the forums. Some of the yeah. forums. And video and so I think we should show that so people can kind of get a flavor of, of how that all all, how that all works. Terrific. So let's take a look at that now. My name is Amy. I'm a volunteer with the Portland League of Women Voters. Hello, I'm Dady Blake and I'm a volunteer with the League of Women Voters. Hello, I'm Stephanie Herzog with the League of Women Voters of Portland. Hello, I'm Debbie Kay, a volunteer with the League of Women Voters of Portland and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We're talking with candidates for the 2016 general election. The general election is November 8th. The last day to register is October 18th. Please, be an informed voter. Don't forget to vote and participate in democracy. Thanks. Good job, looks great. Now before we run out of time here, tell me if other people want to get involved in the League of Women Voters, what do they need to do? They, they can join. They can also be volunteers without being members, but we really appreciate members. We're a small organization with a lot of work to do, and so mm. it's our members that keep us going. One of the things that we do is make democracy work, and you can too. Join the League of Women Voters, you can join online, and we'd be very glad to put you to work. Wonderful. Thank you, both of you, for being on here today. And thank you for all the hard work that you do. Well, we enjoy it. Good. We enjoy, do enjoy every it. minute of it. We have a good time. It. I'm sure you wouldn't <laughs> still be there after all those years if you didn't. Great. No, it's fun. Thanks very much. Thank you, Monica. You bet. And thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. We have a lot more coming up, so please don't go away. We'll be right back.
documentary was more than I ever would have dreamed of doing. This is a community media station. It was phenomenal. Ready camera one. What is it about this place that makes so many different people come together? Ready camera two. Very professional, experienced people. You can use these industry standard pieces of equipment. Ready camera three. Take three. You don't have to be rich to do this. Open people's eyes to something they've never even thought of before. Cool stuff happens. It becomes this community. That's going to really change who's telling the stories and who's, who's controlling the messaging.